Hey, good morning. I'm going to read out of Mark chapter 16 today. It says, Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. On the way, they were asking each other, Who will roll away the stone? But as they arrived, they look up, looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. When they entered the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in white, in a white robe, sitting on the right side. The women were shocked, but the angel said, Don't be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Now, go and tell his disciples, including Peter, that Jesus is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there just as he told you before he died. Now, I copied all of this passage in order to focus on two words that Mark includes that Matthew, Luke, and John do not. You know, there are subtle differences between the gospel writers in retelling the events at the tomb. And each account is completely accurate and reliable with each one providing a few unique details that fill in the whole picture for us. So, what are the two words that Mark has that the others do not? Well, they are including Peter. That's it. The angel instructs the women, go and tell his disciples, including Peter. Now, since it's not just Mark who authors this gospel, but it's the Holy Spirit through Mark, there must be significance in these two words. Now, admittedly, this is my assumption, because we aren't given any explanation here. But I think it has to do with the epic failure of Peter's boast. You remember, Jesus said that all of them would abandon him, and Peter replied, even if everyone else deserts you, I will never desert you. I can almost imagine Peter waving his hand at all the other disciples. Even if all these other guys abandon you, I never will. I can imagine also the bitter regret that must have been devouring Peter from the inside. Satan was probably whispering, you loser. You fraud. He can never forgive you. Yet the messenger of God brings hope with these two words, including Peter. No matter the size of our mistake, we have a God who includes us in his forgiving love. Pray with me. Lord, I thank you that you forgive my failures, that you offer forgiveness to us all, even when we, in our arrogant bravado, say we'll never fall by doing that, and we turn around and do it. You include us. You ask us to come to you in repentance. And you say that if we confess our sins, you are faithful to forgive our sins. Remind us of that today. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, friends, I hope you have a great day. God bless you. See you again tomorrow.